Hi, in this chapter, I'm going to start a new chapter, which will be the final chapter uh, for this course. And the title of the chapter is as follows. So you may, you may recall that the first chapter that we looked at in this course was the univariate extremes, which is where I introduced the three definitions of extreme values. The second chapter we looked at was portfolio theory, which was on financial risk. The third chapter we looked at was financial risk measures, which is again on financial risk part of the course. And the fourth chapter we looked at was copulas, which is again on the financial risk part of the course. And the final chapter, we are returning to the, the extreme values part of the course. Right. Remember that the title of the course is Extreme Values in Financial Risk. So just to finish, finish off this course, I want to talk more about the extreme values part. Okay. All right. Now, often, Okay. Often um, you have situations where you're interested in extremes, extreme values of more than one variable. Now let me give you, show you some examples. Uh, the first example, uh, is this, right? So this is known as El Nino which is caused by extreme values of sea temperature and air pressure. So you, here you have not just one variable, you have two variables, and you're interested in the extremes of sea temperature and the extremes of air pressure, right? The second example are floods, right? And once again here, floods are caused by extreme values of rainfall and wind speed. So you're interested in ex extremes of rainfall and extremes of wind speed, right? Two variables. Um, the third example is hurricanes. Hurricanes are caused by extreme values of sea temperature, rainfall, and wind speed. So you're interested in extremes of three variables, extremes of sea temperature, extremes of rainfall, and extremes of wind speed, right? And the next example is droughts. Droughts are caused by extreme values of rainfall and temperature. So here you are interested in extreme values of rainfall and extreme values of temperature. And the next example is forest fires. Forest fires are caused by extreme values of temperature and wind speed. So once again, here you're interested in extreme values of temperature and extreme values of wind speed. And the final example are tornadoes, right? Tornadoes are caused by extreme values of humidity and wind speed. So here you're interested in extreme values of humidity and extreme values of wind speed, right? So each of these examples each of these examples involves extreme values of more than one variable, okay? Um, so, and the question is how to, how to model them. 
All right, so that's uh, before we can actually model, before we can start talking about modeling uh, bivariate or trivariate extreme values, we need to find a way to define bivariate extreme values or trivariate extreme values. How do you define? Like in univariate case, in the univariate case, I gave you three definitions. You may recall them. But in the bivariate case, how do you define extreme value? And that's, that's what I will talk about in the next video.